Welcome, welcome, Be Holy, Be Perfect community. Thank you for tuning in, greeting in the name of the Lord. Uh, the name of the Lord, El Shaddai, El Elyon. We thank uh, you for tuning in. And I just want to say that uh, our last topic about grief, uh, uh, and I, I, I want to make sure that we understand that grief, grief has be when grief appears when we have failed to uh, transition from mourning, uh, which mourning allows the time uh, God has given to heal. And that is uh, a time that God gives to people for uh, the return, the return of his gift that he allowed them to share for a period of time in this life. So let's remember that if we are still, if when people hurt us, uh, if people, we still feel in pain after a year or two years about a loss, when somebody mentioned this or that, we are not mourning, we are grieving. And that has become uh, 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 really it has become a part of a sickness that will not lead to healing. So we must allow, ask God to heal us and deliver us from grief. Now, our topic today, uh, is purpose, a uh, lack of purpose. When we talk about purpose, we are talking about God's purpose, God's way, his plan for our life. Now, when we talk about purpose, we are talking about God's plan for our life and our life for God's plan. This is what we're talking about now. And when we uh, suffer or we experience the effects of a broken world, of living in a broken world, we will ignore God's plan or we will never learn what God's plan is because what? We are living and we are engaged and entangled in what the world says that uh, our plan should be and how we should live. And that uh, sisters and brothers in the community of uh, group of holy, uh, our holy community here, that is a wrong concept and that can lead to uh, why we are not receiving the covenant blessings from the Lord. Proverbs 4 and 25, let your eyes look right on with fixed purpose and let your gaze be straight before you a fixed purpose we must have a fixed purpose it shouldn't be waving wavering going back and forth today we are we are um we are uh zeroed in on our purpose and tomorrow we just uh, i just can't do it i don't feel like it you know uh whatever the situation is but we need to stay focused and we need to have a fixed purpose and that fixed purpose come from god isaiah 4 14 and 27 for the lord of hosts has purpose for the Lord of hosts has purpose, and who can annul it? See, the Lord has set a purpose for our lives, and no one, and no one, not even us, can annul it. And his hand is stretched out, and who can turn it back? Who can turn it back? We decide if we are going to live the life of purpose in God under the rule and government of God. That is our decision. And when we, what, turn aside to our own uh, insight and understanding, we turn away from the purpose of God. We will never understand and we will never grasp the purpose of God for our life. And this is why we must uh, see the word of God as a whole pattern, as a whole of instructions for our life. We can't just take certain scriptures and apply them and the other ones we put in a meat grinder and say we don't need them. No, we, we must uh, accept the whole word of God. And so we must look we must look and keep our eyes on God's on God's fixed purpose for our life and our life must be the purpose of of God. Map Mark 7:23 Mark 7:23 All these evil purposes and desires come from within and they make the man unclean and render him unholy. What makes a man or a woman unholy? His evil purposes and 
his evil desires. Now, what are, what are evil desires and what are purposes? These are things that what? We put above, we ex exalt above God's purpose. And so we, we, we want to play these mind games with God and think that we want to do what we want to do, when we want to do it, how we want to do it. And then when it fails, like God say it's going to fail, then we want to run to him and, and I want him to bail us out like he's bailing us out of jail. It don't work that way. He is telling us all these purposes and desires that are apart from God's purpose and desires for our life will make a man unclean and render him unholy. And what happens when we are rendered unholy? We become defied. And then what do we need to do? We need to repent. Acts 3.19. So he say what? So repent. Change your mind and your purpose. <laughs> See, we can't just say we repent and we do not change our mind and our purpose where our mind and our purpose is what? It is fixed on the purpose of God. It is fixed on God's purposes for our lives. And he is saying, turn around from these evil desires, turn around from these purposes uh, and desires that are going against God, turn around and then turn to God that your sins may be erased, blotted out, wiped clean. That time, that the time of refreshing, of recovering from the effects of heat, of reviling with fresh air may come and the presence of uh, from the presence of the Lord. So what is he saying in all those words? He's basically saying, turn from your sins so you can be refreshed, recover and recover and restore. And it will be a refreshing. It will be a reviving or revival to your spirit, mind and body. And it will what? That it will come from the presence of God. It will what? It will come from the presence of God. All refreshing, all recovery, all healing, all come from the presence of God. We cannot and never, must never negate that flat, that uh, fact. And so as you can see here with these different images, <laughs> when we open our mouth, something come out. When we open our mouth, something come out. One of these in images where it says repent, clean, uh, cleanse, defilement. See, when we repent, there is a dome. We are surrounded by a dome and these different evil purposes and desires will not be able to impact us unless we decide or make a decision to what? to do them again, to repeat uh, the same sins uh, again. And so we have to be careful uh, not, not to uh, just think that God is a, um, uh, a revolving door where we just constantly doing the, uh, committing the same sin and expect God to just continue to, to forgive us when really our heart has not uh, made a complete or uh, purposeful repentance. And so we have to take this stance that Daniel took, Daniel 1 and 8. But Daniel purpose, what did he do? He purposed. He decided. He had a fixed purpose in his heart that he would not defy, he would not defy himself with the king's dainty, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the, the eunuch that he might not defy himself. Isn't that something? Look, I, you know, even when we live in a world that is fallen and we work for people that uh, have a different belief system than we do, God will change their heart. He will turn their heart toward you and say, look, and we say, look, this what, what you're asking me to do is against the purpose of God in my life. And, and, and God will move on their heart. Some of them are just totally evil and maybe they won't change, but God will change the system, situation and we must trust God to change that situation. We must trust God to change the situation if we are in a situation where someone is trying to defy us or contaminate us or pollute us. Proverbs, Proverbs 19 and 21, many plans are in a man's mind. Many plans are in a man's mind, but it is the Lord's purpose for him that will stand. Only the Lord's purpose will stand. A lot of people, they feel that they are successful apart from God, but we know and we always see the end. You know, uh, how 
uh, might how how uh, heavily and how far the mighty have fallen. That's a that's a uh, like a slang. But look, when the plans that man make, unless they are the plans in a line with God's purpose for for his life for her life, that that plan will not stand because he's telling us right here. And this is where we trust the word of God. We, If we distrust the word of God, we'll say, no, I'm making my own plan. But if we trust God, what? He, we will understand that, but it is the Lord's purpose for him that will stand. It is only the Lord's purpose for us that is going to stand, that is going to manifest true godly success, true holy success as it is under the uh, under the eyes of God. So our purpose must be God's purpose. Our life purpose must be God's purpose. His purpose, my life. My life, his purpose. So we have to allow God to rule and govern our lives. I know that that is like a broken record, but if we don't get that in our system, spirit, mind, and body, we will just, you know, we will ignore it. We will ignore it just like we ignore sometimes how wonderful it is for the sun to rise and the Lord give us sun and how wonderful it is to have water to drink. We'll just think, take that for granted, you know, and we shouldn't take things for granted. So when we have a lack of purpose, a lack of God's purpose, then that purpose will not stand. We will always have different trials and different difficulties. And that is not to say that we will not have difficult serving the Lord. We will because we live in a fallen and broken world. And I want to say to you, uh, be holy, be perfect community. Stand firm in the fixed purpose of God for your life. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May he shine his face upon you and make you whole. In Jesus' name, amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. Bless the Lord, our God.